Championship to win a match. It is not a household item. Therefore, this match must continue. It's an item around Jeff Jarrett's household. Well, the ruling is it's, he not, a, it to sleep. it's not a household item. It's a, the ruling was. I've seen it in his house. You get in here right now. Oh, look at Teddy Long. And Jarrett. Oh, Jarrett may put the figure four on Teddy Long. I don't blame you. Wayne Turner's got the guitar. Look out. Certainly is. I guess it is. I don't know. Let me down the kill. And Turner. Turner has made history. Turner, the first woman to become the Intercontinental Champion. Vocabulary too. I've been hits in the distant distance. It's all brand new. You're through. I'm in the planetary and like Doctor Who. So who? Fuck your beef. No relief. I step on stage. Girls scream like I'm Keith. Every time we do a show, I always wonder what we're gonna talk about, how we're gonna talk about it, the order it just was received. Um, and today is no different. Um. Anybody who's <coughs> been on this journey with us for five years know this is more than just a wrestling show. Um, it's a wrestling show at its core, but it's also a journey into the mind and the ideas of its host. Mm-hmm. Uh, Keith and Keisha are back with you once again. Keisha, say hi to the people. Hello, everyone. Hello, everyone. Hello, everyone. I'm a little little metal out today. Um Actually, I'm a lot middle out today. It's been a very long and trying day today, so bear with me. We are here to do another wonderful podcast and to talk about the world of professional wrestling and talk a little bit about life. Uh, this is, like I said, about a life and a journey thing. Um we enjoy everything nostalgic about the 80s, the 90s, and things of that nature, especially when it comes to professional wrestling. But there's a world outside professional wrestling that is also, that also influences professional wrestling and also influenced by professional wrestling. Um, so with that, we had some significant losses today, as everybody knows. I mean, today started off so weird, right? So I get up this morning, I'm prepping the notes for the show, I send Keisha a message, she sends me a message, next thing I know, first thing I see will pop into Facebook is that uh, we lost China. And it was an unexpected loss, and I know she had her struggles, but from what I know about her, she was actually getting on the mend. Um, that was one of the things that was like encouraging, and I... I don't know all the causes of death right now. So that was the idea of today's show was we were going to talk a lot about China and we are going to talk a lot about China. Well, midway through the day, I get hit with the news that uh, we lost Prince, the Prince, like the one and only Prince Rogers Nelson from Minneapolis, Minnesota, the father of the Minneapolis sound. Uh, I mean, the soundtrack to life you know what i mean like maybe the greatest musician of all time prince Prince. um and you know how you do with death you verify verify like first you wait for the first major network to say it's true and it's like wow um yeah it it was a it was an amazing idea of how we was gonna get through his show uh or even was gonna do a show um but we're gonna do it and we're going to honor the life and memory of these wonderful people. Uh, Prince, I mean, there's nothing, I mean, there's no adjectives I can say to describe the magnitude of Prince. I mean, I'm just going to give you an example of Prince. He performed during the Super Bowl. And to end his show, he performed Purple Rain. 
and he made it rain. Like, they're not rain like the strip club, but he made like rain fall from the sky. Right. <laughs> Magic of Prince. Uh, so it's the music, of course, that will accompany us today's show, of course, will be music by Prince. I mean, what that would be blasphemous not to do that. Um, so I want y'all to enjoy the ride. I want y'all to enjoy the show. We're going to talk about some wrestling and we're going to talk about the impact of these wonderful people on our lives and the effects and some slight connections and we're going to to work it all in right so uh, enjoy the show and without further ado here's Ringtime Pro Wrestling let's get with China right now because Joni Lore she was an icon of the Attitude Era Um, she is one of the major catalysts of the Attitude Era right that's true if you think about the Attitude Era and you think about The Rock, you think about Stone Cold, but then you think about DX, right? Right. And I don't know what DX is without China. Uh, especially, I mean, she's she's a she's an original founding member. Like it's not HBK and Triple H. It's HBK, Triple H, China, Rick Rude, who coincidentally, coincidentally, Keisha. 17 years ago today, we well, 17 years ago yesterday, we lost Rick Rude on April 20th. That's crazy. Just, just, just Rick, very coincidental. But, uh, and Rick was about to come back. He had some ideas. I, but yeah, we lost Rick Rude 17 years ago on April 20th. So, this is, you know, a lot going on today, right? Because right. we were going to, Honestly, before China, we were going to talk about that and what Rick Rude could have been and would have been, and we, we might get into that on the latter end of the show. Okay. Um, but let's go right now with China. Um, A.K.A. Bill is the ninth wonder of the world, because Andre the Giant is the eighth wonder of the world, right? Right. Um, she is the only female to ever hold the Intercontinental Championship. First woman to participate in the Royal Rumble. Only woman to ever be in King of the Ring. She actually became number one contender at one point for the WWF title. Yeah, I remember that. Do you understand that she has singles victories over Triple H, Kurt Angle, Chris Jericho, and Jeff Jarrett? That woman was magic in the ring. Magic. I mean, there's nothing else to describe her Her. In ring ability, she was wonderful. That's why they call her the ninth wonder of the world. She was greatness on a whole nother level. Like, I know I always talk about women's wrestling, but China was a different story. Like, there there was no, there, to tell the truth, uh, with her and other women, they were on two separate pages. Because China didn't play with the women, China was out there playing with the men. She was out there giving her 110%, which was, like, the, some of the best wrestling I've ever seen from a woman. Like, no, nobody is. Actually, it's some of the best wrestling I've ever seen, period. Like, I... She's always been one of my favorite wrestlers. Always. Like, I loved watching China. Period. So, it was hard. It's hard, man. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> she uh, worked through a lot, right? Like, she had this... Her interest into the business was crazy. Um, she has done a lot in her life. Um, she's done a lot of different work. And, you know what I mean? She worked her way into the wrestling business. Um, trained by Killer Kowalski, who coincidentally trained Triple H, right? Right. And uh, she worked in the permitted promotions, and uh, some of her earliest matches were set up by Moolah. Uh, and then one day she had a chance meeting with Triple H and Shawn Michaels. They brought her to Vince, got her signed, and the rest is history. And um, she was approached by WCW even at the time that she was signed 
by WWF, which helped fasten her getting signed because Vince really wasn't hot on the idea of China. But after WCW approached her, he had to get her up and get her her in the fold, right? So that happened. Uh, fast forward, she's a member of DX. She's a heater for Triple, for Triple H. So she starts interfering in his matches, helping him out. And the early part of Triple H is China. Like, you can't separate the two. And I think Triple H owes a lot of his early career to China. Because he was a good worker in the ring and a good mechanic. But I think having her made him stand out and made people say, well, who is that? You know what I mean? Right. And having that who is that gave him, helped him with his notoriety. And move him further along the card. And then she always played it straight with their annex with DX. Like she really didn't do too much. She just helped out. But then when she started to develop her own personality, I think it really blossomed and it really started to show. And that she had a lot to contribute also. Right? Right. Um, and to be honest, I mean, I can't really talk about the life of Jody without mentioned a tumultuous relationship that later developed with WWE but I'm not going to go too much into the negative and all the other stuff that has happened but it, it is a very interesting situation that we have here right? Right. And I'm not blaming anybody anywhere for anything that's happened to anybody. So let me put that out in the show early as we talk about everything in China and everything in her life. But really this is more of a celebration than anything of a wonderful competitor, somebody who I think in theory should be in the Hall of Fame, but I get why she's not in the Hall of Fame and may not get in at any point, anytime soon. It's unfortunate that she passed away before there's opportunity for her to get into the Hall of Fame. Because <coughs> I think an opportunity will present itself for her to get into the Hall of Fame later on. But right now, I don't think that that opportunity necessarily exists. Yeah. And I, nah. and I don't think it was going to exist for a while. And part of the reason is because, hey man, she is inexplicably linked to Triple H, who is yeah. now married to Stephanie McMahon and, you know, run, running the company, for lack of a better word. Or at least a part of the brain trust that helps run the company. Um, I think her being brought back into the fold would cause him to explain some things he may not want to explain or want to talk about, right? Or anybody want to explain or talk about. Because at the end of the day, one of the things where she started spiral out of control is after her Triple H split up due to his relationship with Stephanie McMahon. Yeah. That's that that's fact, right? I can't I think that's I think that's established that that's what it started, but it's not necessarily. But I'm saying I'm not blaming anybody. I'm just saying that's where it starts. But uh, neither here nor there. Like I said, name a woman who's ever going to win the Intercontinental Championship again, right? And mind you, this is what the IC belt was a very hot belt. Right. This is not not right now. Like how it was not it now, where it's kind of like oh, okay, Intercontinental Champion. No, this was like when, like, a good, great, a great percentage of the card was like, oh yeah, I need to be in a continental champion. Yes, all these other belts are out here, but I want the IC belt. Thank you. Like, people were coming out and attacking each other just to be in the number one contendership for the Intercontinental title. It was like some of the best wrestling ever. <laughs> in my opinion, at that point. And for China to even be in that picture was incredible. Especially if you were a little girl like me watching wrestling and you're like, yes, yes, a woman. Oh my God, she's wrestling the man. Oh, she's kicking his ass. Like, it's greatness. It was greatness seeing her with the belt. Um, it, it was great, and 
So, even if I run through down the street, um, I have to honestly say that they were awesome all around. Um, I had it in her career. I don't think it will ever be repeated. Anyway, if it does happen, it will be forever and a day from now. <laughs> like, I, I seriously don't see it happening. Okay. Um, she's loved more in wrestling, period, that you, do, you can't even duplicate. Can't even think of it. Man or woman. It, just can, it can't be <laughs> Not um, when we're talking about their own individual accomplishments. Like it, just, it can't. That can be done, of course, by a man because they're men. But like a woman? Nah. Nah. Of course, they have their own vision. It only be that way. And I love it. And I'm, I'm so happy for it. Okay. For just this one chance. Who has been living in somebody else's shadow for so long that they would just be jumping at a chance to go to SummerSlam and face the World Wrestling Federation Champion? You ain't talking about The Rock. Who is it? Who is it? Well, I think I've got that person. Tonight in the triple threat match, it's going to be Triple H. It's going to be The Undertaker. Yeah, who? And the third and final opponent in that triple threat match to see who the number one contender at SummerSlam will be is China. Oh, my God. Enough. All due respect, China's just a girl. Oh, so I put her in this spot, Sean, so she can get hurt. This is serious business. This is for the number one contender slot. No place for a woman. Uh oh. Oh, no. I don't think so. Michaels is playing politics. Take that opportunity, Commissioner Michaels. Just a woman? Try me, Triple H. Wow. There will never be another China. Like, everything that China did in the ring and in her career, it won't ever be duplicated. Not by any other woman. Like, you want to, I want to sit here and say, oh, we can have one day. I'm not going to do that. I won't do that because I, I don't even believe those words. So, China was one of a kind in every aspect of, of um, period. Like, I don't, I, I can completely understand where her nickname came from and, like, why she was so important to wrestling. Like, it was, she was, she was awesome all the way around. So, it's really hard to describe China in ways that, you know, don't really take away from anything. Because at the end of the day, it was, she was China, you know? And it, when you say the word China to a wrestling, when you say the name China to a wrestling fan that has been watching since her debut, like, of course, it it just brings on a whole nother aspect <laughs> of the business. Like, she just was everything when it came to being a woman in the ring with the men. You know, it was a totally different story when it came to China. And that is something that I personally could never let go of. I mean, I honestly was just watching one of her old matches like last week. So, um, it's just crazy. Like, it's, this is just crazy. I literally 
found out what happened at like two o'clock in the morning, just randomly waking up in the middle of the night. So like, I couldn't believe it. I really just had to. Of course, I'm tight. I have to look it up until I can find that valuable source that says, "Hey, this actually happened." So it was just. It's still. It's still unbelievable. Like to tell the truth, is just highly shocking to take in right now. You know. Like, I'm going to wake up tomorrow and remember that this actually happened and be like, man, seriously? Like, like it's, it's China, Keith. Like, it's China. Really? <sighs> too soon. I just, I don't, I really don't know what else to say about it. It was just too soon. But, I mean, what else can you say about it? Yeah, um, what I will... I don't know if I can necessarily agree with you that there will be there won't be another woman to achieve make some of those achievements because I think they the way the WWE is headed that they may have a shot at a woman um, you know reaches some very different goals in the ring right um, so we'll see how that see how that works itself out. Um, I do think if she was one of a kind, uh, that that's 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 an understatement. Um, I think you can see her influences on the women of today in wrestling. Um, I think you could definitely see that a lot of the women coming up aspire to those goals and have ideas that they can do anything in the business because of a China. I think she helped take the lid off of the idea of what the, the capabilities of what a woman can do in the wrestling business. Um, do I think there'll be a lot of intergender inter interaction? Probably not. You know what I mean? I think we're at a different place in society right now. That doesn't mean that won't ever change. I mean, who, we never saw the attitude come, era coming, right? Right. So, I mean, that's one thing that I don't necessarily... I don't know how that's going to work itself out, but uh, definitely, definitely um, an incredible competitor. Um, her time in New Japan was crazy. Um, she did some time in TNA. Um, she's been all over the world. Um, unfortunately, we got to see a very public down spiral of her post wrestling. Whether it was um, her working and doing the reality show circuit, whether it was you know just her appearances on like Howard Stern and stuff like that, like it, she really had a very public downfall. But like I said, to be fair, she was definitely back on the upswing of things and trying to get back into you know some kind of stability and normal life. Um, you know her problems with substance abuse was very public um, also if you ever want to know about a double standard in the world remember how Triple H was kind of like hey we didn't you know want to bring her back and because of the things that she's done out in the world and doing porn and stuff like that Yeah. Um, haven't you seen X-Pac in almost every Hall of Fame and haven't you seen him Yeah. around you know what I mean because he, he, he was all in, a part of all of that, right? Like, he's the one who helped release the first tape. Right. right? He was in the one, first tape. Right. He's 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 all about One Night in China, right? So, that's that's him. Um, the drug abuse and all that stuff, that's out there because of him. And he's in there. He's a part of it. Like, they're inexplicably linked. I mean, hell, he shows up on the surreal life, and they damn near end up in a fight where Brett about to hit him with a bottle. Like, I mean, it, like it's, it's it's all there, right? Right, right. But <laughs> he gets to come back instead of fold, like fam, right? But w what about China? <laughs> now I understand that maybe he doesn't. X Pac doesn't present a problem at home. For Triple H, you know what I mean, and this is no way disparaging anybody. I'm just trying to just give, just call everything what it is, right? Right. 
Um, but I think China was trying to get back into the fold. And she was trying to get back into the WWE fold. Like she was trying to get back in the fam and just be a part of something to try to resemble some normalcy of her life with that. And they were just treating her like she was just some bugaboo, like when she would show up. You know what I mean? Like it was just like, oh man, she just rolled up and did, you know what I mean? Right. Uh, so it's, uh, you know, it was kind of crazy. So, you know, at the end of the day, I think uh, it's, it's all, I mean, it is what it is, but uh, she will be missed. Um, I think she is an all-time great. I think she, you cannot deny her impact on the business and the fact that she changed the course of wrestling for women and changed the idea of what women could be in the wrestling business. So with that being said, RIP China. Um, I thought this show, you'll hear some promos from China and some things that we've spliced together with the audio. Um... So, Keish, with that being said, I guess we could get into this week's wrestling, right? Yes. Yes, we can. Uh, I think we're about 23 minutes deep. We'll just jump right into Raw, right? Right. We're in London. Uh, Shane O'Mac is running stuff still. And I like their angle with him running things. Right now, he running stuff, and it's time for Fresh and New, Okay. Uh, not really fan of Dean Ambrose, the talk show host, but I get it. I'll let Ambrose have the Ambrose Asylum. But I'll say this, Keish. You want me to play old man, get off my lawn wrestling again? Because <laughs> I'm, I'm ready. I'm, I'm ready to be old man, get off my lawn about this wrestling. I'm just saying. If we're going to have interview segments and we're going to do the highlight reel, we're going to do the Ambrose Asylum, right? Right. We ain't got to do it in the ring. Why are we doing it in the ring, Keish? Piper's Pit wasn't in the ring. Right. Exactly. Adrian and Dallas Flower Shop wasn't in the ring. The barber shop with Bruce Bar Beefcake wasn't in the ring. The funeral parlor with Paul Bear and the Undertaker wasn't in the ring. The snake pit wasn't in the ring. I, I go on and on. Can y'all set up a sound stage up near the top? You know what I mean? Somewhere. And uh, do the segments. It's possible. They can't do it. They just choose not to. Instead, they just choose to do it in the rain. They can play it for the people in the arena on the big screen. Broadcast it live at home. Just like they do the backstage interviews. Right? Right. And do the segments. That's all. Put a little time in it, man. Spend a little money. Build some sets. Hang up some stuff. I mean, it ain't hard. You're just doing a small set that you can travel with. That's all. We're just doing it for raw. Exactly. I, 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 it's just, it's just, it's just something. I mean, take me back a little bit. You know what I mean? Do if you're gonna do these things, do them right. That's all. Um, but they set some matches for the night. Uh, I thought we were going to get the obligatory tag team match when Sami Zayn showed up and Jericho was there and Kevin Owens was there and Shane, you know, was talking. I, I thought we was going to get the all right. Well, Sami and Dean, y'all team up and y'all take you take on Kevin and Jericho. We didn't get that. We got Sami Zayn versus Chris Jericho and then Dean and uh, Kevin Owens in the main event. I will say this. Sammy Zayn and Jericho is a good match. But I'm about mm-hmm. to call Sammy Zayn near fall Sammy. Aww. That's Sammy good. Can't get a, Sammy can't get a win on TV for shit. <laughs> he, can't, he can't. And it's awful. I feel sorry for him. I really do. Yeah, he gonna be, I'm just going to call him near fall Sammy. That, that's just what it is. Because that's all he's doing. He, 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 gets, he gets to near fall. Aww. And then he does. See here. Near fall Sammy. But it's it, it's it, I just think it's funny. But uh, one day he'll actually stick one of those wins on TV. But uh, it was a solid match. Uh, we got a Bullet Club reunion in London. 
AJ mm-hmm. was hanging out with uh, Doc and, uh, you know, Carl. Now, we're going to ignore how they ended their relationship in New Japan. WWE fans don't know nothing about it. They just know that they hold boys from Japan. Right. Right. So, uh, you know, it's kind of funny. But, yeah. They are there. And they was doing that. And uh, they made that all, you know, whatever, whatever. But uh, that turned into a thing. Later on that night, uh, Izzo and Cass took on the Dudleys in the semifinals of the tag team tournament and mm-hmm. beat the Dudleys. Uh, they're going to take on the Vaughn Villains in the finals, Keish. How did the this NXT happen? Team, the NXT team's on the roll, man. The Vaughn Villains got a clean win on the Usos. That's what I mean. How? They, they, they're going to give a, a little bit of a leeway to a newer team. And that's fair. The Usos are two-time champs, right? So mm-hmm. they have their credibility. So they can lose and not lose anything, especially in a tournament. Because they can come back and beat the Vaudevillians later, if need be. So I think it's good that they give these new guys the rub. But if you look at now the main roster tag team, is stacked. Mm. Like the surge of interview that they got from NXT... Is amazing. So if you take Enzo and Cass, you take the Vault Villains, right? That's two new teams, fresh matchups. The New Day is there. The Usos are there. The Dullies are still there. Uh, Doc and Carl are there. Right? So now you brought in a new team off the street that's going to hit the main roster immediately. So they're there. How many teams am I up to now? About six? Uh, yeah, League of Nations is still floating around. You can use the Wyatts how, however you choose, um, and you can start plugging in, you know, different teams if you want to match the people up. Um, I wouldn't be surprised, or I wouldn't even be pissed off if Kevin Owens and Jericho became a tag team. Right. Just you know, if I'm fantasy booking this thing. But now, like like I said, there's a shot in the arm. So now I got about eight teams in rotation to keep fresh matchups and to create an actual division, right? So I can always have the champions face the number one contenders, but then have two or three teams that are always in hot pursuit. They feuding, trying to get to the number one contender spot. And that could keep that division fresh for a while. Right. I mean, because I think the company's at its best when it has a hot tag team division. And I think that's also a good place to develop singles wrestlers later. Like, I like tag teams that are teams. Like, the Dudleys are, are a team to be a team. I think Bully Ray has something to offer as a singles competitor. I think even Divine has something to offer as a singles competitor. But at this advanced stage of their career, I think they best suited as a tag team. Period. I think uh, the Usos are just going to be a career tag team. I don't really see them split off. Unless they start trying to figure out ways to accentuate their individuality. But I mean, they move set is pretty much the same. Like, I don't think there's anything really to... I think you pretty much keep them as a career team. Right. Enzo and Cass, uh, I think they will grow. And Enzo could move over to as a manager for Cass. Or... Enzo might go on his own at some point. I mean that those bike skills can help him and his work you know, will be interested. Uh his gimmick may need some adjustment down the line, but hey man, keep keep spitting them spitting them hot lyrics. Exactly. Right. And I mean he he's he got new snaps every week, so I I appreciate that. So somebody on the right team has let him get in what he needs to get in. Um one thing I will take away from this week's show, man, we need some managers. The world of pro wrestling needs managers again. Because some of these guys, Roman talk too much. <laughs> and Roman ain't good at talking. Like, that's not his strength, and I would, I, I would keep him out of that. Like, I would keep him far away from that mic as possible. 
like one thing he need not do is talk too much because he's not I think it, the people already don't like him and I don't think his his promos endear him to the audience at all so I, 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 will, I would probably keep him away from the mic as much as I could that's just my personal opinion I'm not trying to tell you that he shouldn't be chairman. I'm just saying I would keep him off that mic. And he probably could use a manager. Uh, fantasy booking. He's already working himself towards the heel without really changing too much. Make him the heel. I turn the Usos heel. And had him as a little faction. Get them a little representation. And we off and running. And that way, they don't need the authority. They can use somebody. They manager could be the heater, and then that manager could go talk to the authority every now and then, and be bothersome and you know try to negotiate things, that kind of thing. But you know, I'm just watching. Um, just glad to go down the line. Um, mm-hmm. So uh, we saw an eight woman tag match. I thought that was interesting. Natty made Charlotte tap. Uh, I appreciate what they're doing with Natty. I'm glad she's back in the mix and they starting to use her as her talents. But you know what my problem is, Keith? What y'all doing with my girl? Yeah. What y'all doing with Sasha Banks? Uh, look, I'm trying to figure that out myself because... It, it, uh, why, Keith? Why? It's Sasha. Come on, man. They got to be doing something and they need to be doing it soon because... I miss Sasha. Like, I just, I don't see how is it they've gone this long without her. And what is going on anyway? That's my question. Why is she not, you know, what, what's really happening? Can I, someone explain that to me in regular words? I don't know. I just know that Sasha is every level of greatness. And I'm going to need for them to be doing something about that. That's all mm-hmm. I know. So, but of course, WWE gonna do what they want to do when they want to do it when they own their own time and when they're ready. So all we can do is sit back and wait patiently and know that Sasha is out there in the world waiting to get to to do what she do. So, yeah, there's that. Yeah. Uh. Yeah. uh I saw Cesaro join Miz TV for a lackluster segment, which turned into Rusev showing up, which turned into the new day, and it just turned into an eight-man tag, like, out of nowhere. I was like, this is weird. But uh, it worked out. I think Cesaro's looking good. Uh, I like the idea of him getting rejuvenated since he's been back. Like, I don't know. It's like, they're using Shane as this guy, and... I don't know if they just said we gonna listen to the internet and see what happened, or we gonna listen to what people actually been saying, like the guys they actually like, and give them a push and see what happens. Hey, sometimes that's what needs to happen. Uh, otherwise, you don't know how good or bad something's gonna be. So, yeah, I understand it. I definitely understand it. It's foolishness, but I understand it. Yeah, I mean, it's kind of like it was one of those things where like. I mean, the main event was Owens versus Dean Ambrose. I was like, oh, okay. All right. Um, and the London crowd, I mean, they are always hot, man. They are a great wrestling crowd. Um, they always good for TNA. They always good for the WWE. Like, they are incredible wrestling fans. But uh, they they gave it a look. Of course, I think the Jericho Dean Ambrose feud has legs. And it'll give Ambrose something to do while he's trying to find what he's doing next. Because that guy got to be headed for the world title sooner than later. Right? So, um, and I I probably think that they're going to eventually, when Rollins come back, you might see a three-way dance for the title again with the Shield. You know, all vying for that title. But guys right. in kind of different roles. Ambrose kind of just being Ambrose, loose cannon. Rollins being the face and Roman being the heel. Uh, but other than that, very good Raw, very good show. Uh, anything else you got from it? or? 
man, 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 man. I can say it's getting rough, Keith. It's getting rough. That's no. Well, with that, we're gonna roll into our break, and that will uh, we'll come back. We'll do news. We'll do notes. Uh, we will do our birthday segment, of course, and we will talk some NXT. And we're going to talk about uh, a lot of other things that are going on in the rest of the world. So, with that being said, uh, we will be back. And we'll catch you all on the other side. Stinging from the shattered dreams. There you go, help him. Oh, look! A kiss! That'll help him back to his feet. I hope you're not hurt too bad, Mark, because there's something I need you to listen to. Okay? Now listen, I have a little confession to make. The other night with you was incredible. Whoa, the other night? No, I'm serious, it was. But I'm afraid that I'm not enough woman for you. What? No, I'm serious. Because the fact is that you're way too much man for one woman, sexual chocolate. Well, everybody knows that. You are. So I want you to meet my friend Sammy. Sammy? Now, I know you like tall women. Hello, Sammy. And I know that you like exotic dancers. So I have a little proposition for you. I thought that it only was okay with you that Sammy and I can help you take a load off your mind. Timber! Wait a minute, he's faded! Mark Henry has faded! Back like we never left. Ringtime Pro rested on the second half of the show. (coughs) We are here for the birthday segment birthdays this week uh yesterday april 20th uh kurt hawkins celebrated his 31st birthday uh young garrett bischoff celebrated his 32nd uh today which will be yesterday by the time y'all hear it jay lethal celebrated his birthday jay lethal turned 31 uh ezekiel jackson will be celebrating the birthday on friday uh the 22nd which is probably gonna be when you hear the show he will be 38. Uh, Tony Atlas and John Cena both share a birthday Saturday, April 23rd. Uh, significant age difference there, but they do share a birthday. Um, and with that, that is birthdays. On to the news. Um, lots of people have issued statements on the passing of China. Triple H issued a statement where he even talked about the possibility of her entering the Hall of Fame, saying it's not his choice. Uh, which, of course, we know he does have input, and that's kind of bullshit because he helped get other people into the Hall of Fame. Uh, Triple H also is acting like now he cares and would think she'd be a good addition to the Hall of Fame. But that's how people act when people die. Uh-huh. Um, but other stars and people have reached out to World Entertainment and have spoken about it. So that's still going on. Um well, I'll, I'll save this for the NXT's talk later on in the show as we, we close out. Um, and I'm trying to get past to some stuff that I did want to talk about that was news before the, you know, passings and stuff like that. Oh, Connor and Adam Rose uh, are both sidelined due to wellness policy violations. Yeah. Connor of the Ascension and Adam Rose. Uh, Keish. Is it always interested that mid card talent are the only ones that get busted for the wellness policy violations? I thought I was the only one that noticed that. Like, I swear to you, I always thought I was the only one that noticed that. I was like, you don't ever see none of the big stars end up in this kind of stuff. Uh, and it's funny because, like, um, I was, uh, I, once I read the suspicions that happened, I was just kind of like, eh. And went on about my business, and a lot of people do that. It's just, it's crazy that this happened, but at the same time, yeah, you you actually got some, uh, you actually make a very valid point. 
a very valid point. Yeah, I mean, it's like, you know, you just watch around. You be like, huh? And a certain mid card talent too. Like, I'm just saying, Ryback ain't never been suspended. That's all. And I ain't saying Ryback did PEDs. I'm just saying Ryback ain't never been suspended. I'm saying Batista ain't never tested positive. I'm saying John Cena ain't never had a suspension. I'm just saying <laughs> right. that Triple H ain't never had a suspension. I'm saying that, you know, certain people have never violated the wellness policy. And, but like Kalisto, well, no, Kalisto's not violated the wellness policy, I don't think. But, you know, I'm just saying he is more likely to get popped than other people are likely to get popped for <laughs> violating <laughs> the wellness policy. But that's neither here nor there. I uh, just thought something I would just throw out there. But yeah, so basically what they're doing to fill the gaps, because it doesn't really hurt the social outcasts because it's four of them. So it's just Adam Rose is not a part of the social outcasts, but they still the social. Because I think, honestly, he Slater drives that engine, right? I think Hugh Slater is the dynamic personality of the social outcasts. Bo Dallas is, is a big part of it. I think... Curtis Axel is the in rig talent because he's a good worker. Right. But other than that, I mean, Adam Rose is like, uh uh-huh. But what they've done is they've added Victor to the social outcasts because Victor is the one that gets screwed by this, right? Because the Ascension, as much as they just been jobbing the people, A, they make their bones as a tag team. And when one of the members of the tag team is out, y'all screwed. Also, I don't know what Kyder was doing to violate the wellness policy, but he damn sure wasn't doing PEDs. Yeah. And if if he was, he need a refund. Ooh. But that's that's neither here nor there. That I know y'all say it, Keith, that's me. Have I ever told y'all I wouldn't be? But uh so that's that. Um Total Divas do. So uh Sasha Bakes. Said that she will never join the cast of Total Divas, and that is another reason why I love her. Ah, uh, yeah, exactly. Cause Lord knows, I can only imagine how that would have went. Ugh, ugh. Yeah, Sorry. she said there always will be divas, and but she's in a category of wrestlers, and she said it's not for me. I won't ever be on that show. Said it out there for a fact, but. It's fine. People like it. People watch it. So let them enjoy. People like it and watch it so much. E has already upped it for another season. And kids. Announced Monday. There will be a split off to Total D. Mm-hmm. It will be called Total Bellas. All about the Bellas, baby. Because guess what? That's who drives the engine of Total Divas anyway. It's the best. Right. Exactly. So, let's do... Let's just cut the crap. We want to see more Bella. So, they got Bella all day. Because Total Bellas is going to start. And it's going to focus on the life and the extended family of the Bellas. So, there will be more John Cena. And we will get a lot of Daniel Bryan. And we will get Mama Bella will be on the show more now. And her new husband, Johnny Ace. People power. So, (laughs) we will see what it's like. With Daniel Bryan and his father-in-law Johnny Ace, Keish, worth the price of admission right there. John Cena and his maybe future father-in-law Johnny Ace, exactly. worth the price of admission. Also, Bella brother, I forget his name and his wife. I think are going to be a part of the show too. But it's going to be all Bella, all all Bella, everything. So. Let's see how this rocks and rolls. And hey, thing is, Bree is kind of retired from the ring, so we'll get to see what happens with Bree post wrestling. So, and we'll get to see the Nikki come back because I think Nikki's getting cleared and she's still working, and that neck is getting better, so she's gonna get back in the ring because Nikki wants to get back in that ring. Right. Um. So, yeah, that's that's gonna happen sometime soon. So. uh and I, I don't know how soon John's coming back because, I mean, I don't think he was 100% at WrestleMania. And I think he really, really, really wanted to be a part of WrestleMania. But uh, I think he'll be back probably in the next month or two. So, with that being said, peace. 
Are you excited yeah. for Total Bellas? No. <laughs> no, I'm not excited for Total Bellas. I was you, 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 you might be a closet Bella fan. Uh, eh, maybe. I mean, okay. So I don't like necessarily hate them or nothing. I mean, I think they're kind of. Right. <laughs> so I'm in a little. I'm a little. It was, when it comes to the Bellas, I'm in a gray area. Like I like them, but I kind of don't. You know, like it's kind of like uh, sometimes I'm. I'm not team Bella all the way, but just enough. And then sometimes I'm like, ugh get away like <laughs> like no i don't care no so um i want to sit here and be like yeah i'm excited oh my god it's gonna be great i'm really kind of not uh, <laughs> i think not <coughs> so excuse me so i mean i'm happy for him, you know i think that's about as far as you can get when it comes to uh Dealing with somebody like you know, you just you just don't. I don't know. So hopefully it works out for them, you know. But I just didn't think that they would ever be separating from Total Divas in the first place. So yeah, yeah, they are kind of. I think they're going to be on Total Divas, but I think um, they are still going to. Um, now do other things um new japan canceled a pay-per-view that they had scheduled um due to the earthquake that happened over there there was a massive earthquake uh back to the 5.3 that stuck uh i want to say, say this right uh kuomato and kaishu japan on april 18th and it claimed the lives of 40 people uh so new japan uh canceled its pay-per-view i think it was due for Ju- april 29th uh, i think it's gonna be moved to may uh, so be on the lookout for that um also we are gonna do a new a japan report uh soon i know i promised one like a month ago and what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna jam you it's gonna be an hour and a half all probably just me talking to japan getting you guys caught up all the way up to now the impact of the departures and what happened and how that goes forward right because i haven't right. talked to y'all since the beginning of the year about new japan so i will take some time to put one in the bank and record it for you guys so be on the lookout for that um Keith. dixie carter being yes. forced out of majority ownership of the tna yeah possibly Ooh. look here's the thing i i try not to get too excited about tna rumors right because right tna I don't know what's going to happen. I would love for this company to succeed. Because I think we need more wrestling. Right? Uh, I think it's going to be harder for them going forward than it's ever been. Because they're going to they're gonna have to rebrand. Totally. Right? And the landscape for TNA right now isn't what it was 14 years ago when it started. Like when they broke into the scene, it was nothing there. WWE was the big dog. They ran the ship, but still runs the ship. And there was no other brand to talk about. Ring of Honor was there, but it was just starting, and it was like doing a bingo hall once a month. Right. Ring of Honor got national television distribution right now. It's not, I mean, it's syndicated, but it's still national television distribution. And now they're about to expand even further. They got this relationship with PWG, PWG. Is out here trying to make moves. New Japan is trying to make their inroads into the American market. Uh, they just did Invasion Attack a couple of weeks ago with mm-hmm. English commentary again. Right? They also have the Access Show, which are older matches that are like a year old or whatever, but they're rebroadcast mm-hmm. with Jim Ross now doing the commentary since Moral Ronaldo works for the WWE. But. That's still bringing fans who maybe not be familiar with the product, giving them a chance to watch New Japan, right? Right, right. So, if you take that going forward, and they have that available now, it's like, wow, well, um, you know, like, I'm just saying, Lucha Underground now exists, and for better or worse, and they're on El Rey, they're on Wednesday nights, you know what I mean? 
um, Triple A is growing, and they're trying to make inroads. So there's a lot more competition. Championship wrestling from Hollywood um, is seen on YouTube, and you can keep up with the new shows that's coming out every week. It's a lot. Of, <laughs> it's a lot of content to compete as a wrestling company. Now, Pop TV has helped them, and they are in more. They've added more homes. They're still not in mind because my cable package had told me I need to pay them more money to get Pop TV. When I had Pop TV before, they took it away. And I don't know if it's because of TNA they thought they'd get more money. But I'm like, I'm not giving y'all more money for Pop TV. So, you know I mean? If, some way, somehow, I'll start seeing TNA again. I can wait for it to come out online. Uh, but they're going to have to figure out how to read to their show and their company, right? Right. But uh, as far as how she's going to lose ownership, pretty much this, there's this advertising company that's been working with them. That's been paying for the TV tapings or whatever. And two of the people that work for the company are the Harris brothers who uh, work for TNA as wrestlers. And they were part of uh, uh, WWE at one point in time. So former wrestlers. So they're part of this company. And this company does a lot of stuff in television, television production. They do advertising for like the Cochran firm, for example. I mean... I don't, I don't even know how wrestling fits into their brand identity as a company, but apparently TNA owed them some money, mm-hmm. and they owed them big money, and they are behind. Uh, Panda Energy ain't doing as well as everybody thought they was. Well, I'm going to say everybody. I'm going to say a few lonely wrestling nerds who was trying to convince me that they had more money than WWE. That I'm talking about all y'all that was in my mentions when I was like, I... Don't think they can go buck by buck and they can't. Pan Energy ain't worth all that money that y'all think it is. Duh, they are an energy company that's privately held. There's a reason why they ain't went public. But neither here nor there. Also, they're not funding TNA anymore. The, I guess <clears throat> uh, Daddy Carter, they cut off the, the checkbook. I don't know if it's Daddy or if it's Baba Carter and Janice and said, look, little Dixie, you can't keep. You know, taking money out the company. So, they done cut off the checkbook. So, TNA is right. trying to exist on their own. They've downsized. They cut. They closed their offices up. They moved to the warehouse. All the offices to the warehouse. To the shop warehouse. So, they are, you know... And here's the thing, too. They're not going to be able to sign any big-time talent. Because there's no, there's no way to justify the money to get the talent in. Because how can you pay somebody four hundred grand a year? Y'all not running live shows, so y'all not making the money up that way. Also, it would cost y'all money to run live shows because keeps nobody comes. Um, right. Your TV tapers, you try to keep them consolidated. And people say, like, does it hurt that their TV tapers are not up to date? NXT isn't up to date, right? NXT is usually behind when it comes to their television versus what's actually happening. But people just don't care. Like, they keep a fresh product. And when it's time to present the live pay-per-views and things that they do live, the storylines remain consistent. They they just have a better system. You know what I mean? Also, they don't have a lot of pressure. Also, NXT exists now, which it didn't exist when they first started. So there's a lot of people who would rather... I don't know if you make more money in TNA or NXT... I think for the lower level talent, it's probably more money in NXT. I think you probably you have to be a main event TNA talent for it not to be made more money. But the opportunity is more in NXT because one, first of all, you can get merch sales, and I'm sure the merch money from with the WWE engine behind it would make up for a lot of salary that you might miss. Right now, they're touring and doing live shows across the country, and. They don't draw that well in Florida all the time, but they draw really well across the country. And I'm sure those checks are, are pretty good. And <laughs> all the, right. the fact of the matter is, they draw an audience, and the opportunity to go to the main roster now exists. So if you perform in NXT, and you draw well at NXT, main roster time, baby. WWE, you know what I mean? Primes, I'm, I'm going to be on Raw and SmackDown a lot quicker. And, you know, at least a lot quicker than you would if you were just going to work in TNA. So, 
So, you know, that's one of the things that I would, uh, you know, just kind of consider. But I'm not saying TNA can't make it. I'm just telling you what they up against. They they have a lot. They have a lot going on. It's it's going to be interesting how this ownership transfer goes because I think one of the things that hampered TNA is Dixie Carter. Like I, I'll tell you this I, from talking to sources or talking to people I've talked to in the behind the scenes, her and how she deal with the cable networks has like toxified some of their relationships. Uh. Maybe she's just not the best at running a wrestling company. I'm not even sure how she got in- involved. You know what I mean? Like I know Panda Energy got involved, and the Jared to the family got. But I, I don't know what she her background was prior to this. I think she was just like an advertiser or something like that. But uh, it ain't working. It, it it ain't working. And she's hired wrestling people in the past that if. I mean, the company had a lot of good ideas and had a lot of good moments, but it always went to crap. But, uh, so we'll see how it goes, right? Really here. Mm-hmm. Um, also, uh, like I said, I wanted to get into something earlier because we talked about China and we talked about wrestling and stuff like that. And, uh, the 20th, which was yesterday, was the pa- anniversary of the passing of Rick Rude. Uh, he died at age of 40. So today he would have been about 57. Um, he was known as one of the toughest guys in the business. Um, it was a point that, you know, Hulk Hogan wouldn't work with Rick Rude. Because mm. mm. they said he was scared of him. But uh, his career got caught short because, you know, he hurt his back in the match against Sting. But uh, former. IC champion in WWE, former United States champion in WCW, former international world champ. He was a world champ. Uh, he was a world champ of world class. Uh, it's kind of funny that he's not been inducted to the Hall of Fame. Uh, they believe his death may have been a suicide, but the guy was on it. A lot of people say he was trying to get back in. He was trying to make a comeback after that horrific back injury. Uh, but the guy... He had a presence so good that, hey man, the later part of his career, he wasn't wrestling. It was still a part of the business. He was known as the insurance policy. He worked at DX. Then he went over to the NWO. The only guy to appear in the Attitude Era on Raw and Nitro in the same night. See, uh, Raw was pre-taped. And Rude contract was up. And he went to WCW in the midnight hour. And showed up on a live Nitro. And he appeared on Raw and Nitro in the same thing. Never to be done again. But that happened. So, uh, shouts out to Rick Rude uh, and his family. Uh, had the pleasure of actually meeting his son last year or two years ago um, at a, a fair fest. Uh, they had a conversation with him. And that he, he does really well for himself. He does like real estate stuff like that out here in Georgia and lives in the metro area. Uh, so... That just like I said, one guy who I think uh, doesn't get his just due. Incredible technician in the ring. Uh, had a a lot of talent. Uh, there's some matches for the uh, United States title between him and Steamboat in WCW in the mid '90s. Check those out. Those are amazing matches. Amazing matches. But uh, with that being said. So, you want to talk a little NFC, Keish? We can do that. We can definitely uh, talk about that. I watched Wednesday's show. Uh, very good show. Very interesting uh, show. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> American Alpha the successfully defeated their titles against Enzo and Cass, which kind of more was a send off for Enzo and Cass in the main roster. But, man, American Alpha so good. Keish. Probably the really? best working tag team in the business. Oh, they're so good. Yeah. Jordan and Gable are so good. Man. Um, what do you think about the debut of... No, wait. Jose. No, wait. Jose. What What do you think? I Impressed? think... I, 
I, I think I, I'm a little impressed, but not too much. And the reason why I say that is because I don't like the name. Um, personally, I think they could have did better with that. And, and it's, it looks, it's, it's a little cheesy to me, personally. Like, <clears throat> um, it, it's like, really, dude, you know, it's crazy because I... I am impressed by him in the ring. I will say that. I think that the guy can wrestle. I think he's awesome. But, like, when it comes to everything else, I'm like, they need to stop this and change it and do something else with it immediately. Because no way, Jose, that does not need to be his name. I mean, it really just doesn't. I can't. I can't. I can't get with it. <laughs> yes, I can get with him as a wrestler, but uh, nah, his name and all that stuff. Mm -mm. I'm not with that. I'm not okay with that. So, but I have to. I, I think in my mind, I'm gonna need to watch it uh, Wednesday just to see like how things progress with him in this. But like, he didn't hype this man up for the longest. So they have to do something with him that's going to make sense, and that I know for a fact it's going to get him pushed out on the map. So, no way, Jose, you you got my applause or vote or whatever you want to call it right now. Just don't mess this up. That's all I. That's all. <coughs> so. Yeah. That that happened. Um, breaking news. Uh, Samoa Joe is a new NXT champion. Uh, WWE put it out there, so it's not a spoiler, because they put it out all over the internet. Uh, he beat Finn Balor at a live event in Massachusetts uh, no. to win the NXT title. So, hey, Samoa Joe, uh, go carry the belt and probably have some good matches. I'm assuming a match with Shinsuke Nakamura down the line, who also wrestles next week on... Yes. Uh, NXT, so excited. Mm -hmm. um, you know how I feel about that. But, yeah, so Samoa Joe will, take, will defend the belt. So, Finn Baylor coming to the main roster, right? Like, that's that's just, let's just lay that out there. We, we got right. Finn Baylor coming to the main roster. Gotta be soon. Yeah. Like, tomorrow. Something. Mm -hmm. uh, so, does he you that? With the Bullet Club, does he re reunite with Gallows and Anderson? Because uh, a lot of Finn Balor, it's kind of funny. His persona in NXT in the ring has been babyface, but a lot of his social media is very heel. Like he's down with Triple H. He be rolling with Sheamus because they Irish. Like, could he be Bullet Club? I mean, he wear the mm. Baylor Club T-shirts, right? Right. <laughs> So maybe, uh, maybe AJ, Finn, and Doc and Gallows all get together and do this thing with the four of them. But I think they're probably just keep it as a three man group. Yeah, but, you know what I mean. We'll see how it works out. Yeah, it's going to be interesting to watch it unfold. Um, it definitely is going to be interesting to watch it unfold, and uh, I personally. We, I just want to see how if this is going to formulate into what we think it will, you know. So it's going to be a, an adventure. Mm. I give it that one. It's definitely going to be an adventure, <laughs> to say the least. So I don't know what else to say about this, but I'm 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 waiting and I'm excited. You know, they don't really botch Finn Balor's uh, debut into the main roster because personally, I'm anticipating this. I'm going to... <coughs> I, I am definitely anticipating this happening, so... And now that <coughs> uh, he's dropped the belt to Joe, like, it's, it's going to get... It's going to be real and rough around there. It's going to get real, and it's going to be rough. Mm, mm, mm. Yep. And with that, Keish, I'm going to say that we have reached the end of our night. 
I think it's been a wonderful week time pro wrestling. And we will be back at it again next week with some more interested wrestling talk. Um, I think we might be previewing payback next week. Hey, the big payback. The big payback. Okay. Anyway, um, <laughs> we will be back, and I hope y'all enjoy this. And peace. Bye.